you guys. Hey, this is Kendra and Pastor Joey of One Church with Kendra over him. And we are here tonight at the King's Table and we are testing out going live. And so we probably just had a massive blubber. <laughs> but I love the authenticity of who we are. We're just willing to take a risk. So here we are together. Right. And uh, so, Joey, last week I told you something exciting happened. Yes. In my life. And um, we had a, a grandbaby come into the world, remember? And I told you I wasn't going to tell you her name, yeah. but uh, we had a, um, Peyton and Deborah had a little girl and she's precious. And her name is Alice Taylor Oaks. Congratulations, Grandma. Yeah. yeah, I know. I love it. And so um, Alice was actually my great, my grandmother's um, name. And she was so precious to me. And, and Pey Peyton said that, um, great grandma was just precious to him and then deborah's mom's middle name is alice and she was born on deborah's mom's birthday that's so, so cool. yeah so I, last week i said i wasn't going to share it because i didn't want to be a spoiler alert until mm -hmm. it was announced but it's on facebook now so it's definitely legit right <laughs> yeah you can go for it now <laughs> oh my gosh totally. instagram whatever you want to do yeah right <laughs> I'm going to post all the pics. So I do have a grandma pic, which is really fun. And then um, everybody keeps saying, what is she going to call you? What do you, what do they, your, your parents call your kiddos? Or what do your kids call your parents? Uh, mama and papa. Okay. Well, I always thought it would be a mama, but Maddie said that I needed something hipper because I'm a younger gram. So we're going to go with possibly Nona, which is Italian for grandma. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I like that. We'll see if that sticks. Eventually, she's going to say your name and whatever it comes out is, is what's going to stick. And I know. That's what everybody says. And I'm so cool with that because I want her to call me whatever she wants. <laughs> life being known as Bloopy Blob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's a little extreme. No, I'm joking. <laughs> okay, cool. Well, tonight we're still talking on identity. Yep. And we are in about a four to six part series. We're just letting the Lord and the Holy Spirit lead us on how long. Maybe we'll go months. Who knows? There's lots to talk about. And um, as we were praying, you were talking about the title of this one um, being Just One Step. Just One Step. Yeah. You know, um, in the series as we're going through identity, uh, I find uh, it critical to recognize that in the journey that we're on right now, the process that we're going through, there's going to be a lot of distractions. And so I felt like it's going to be really, really important that we just take some time uh, biblically and look at the life of Peter and his relationship with Jesus. And especially um, the, the moment in the story of Peter walking on the water. It's an iconic story. Uh, I feel like even people that have never gone to church really have some idea that, yeah, Jesus walked on the water. Um, even though they might not know what it's all about. And so that's what we're going to get into tonight. We're going to be in uh, Matthew chapter 14. And so I encourage, if you want to, man, open up your Bible if you're there uh, uh, with your word. If not, uh, no worries. You can uh, check this all out later. But I'm just going to read real quick out of Matthew chapter 14. And we're going to go to verse 22, okay? And so this is what it says. Immediately after this, Jesus insisted that his disciples get back into the boat and cross to the other side of the lake. Immediately after this is what he's talking about is he just fed 5,000 people. That's another amazing um, a story to get into, but not tonight. Uh, while he sent the people home. Verse 23, after sending them home, he went up into the hills to pray by himself. Night fell and he was there alone. Meanwhile, the disciples were in trouble far away uh, from land for a strong wind had risen and they were fighting heavy waves. About three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came toward them walking on the water. When the disciples saw him walking on the water, they were terrified in their fear. They cried out, it's a ghost. But Jesus spoke to them at once. Don't be afraid. He said, take courage. I am here. Then Peter called to him, Lord, if it's really you, tell me to come to you walking on the water. Yes, come, Jesus said. So Peter went off over the side of the boat and walked on the water toward Jesus but when he saw the strong wind and waves, he was terrified and began to sink. Save me, Lord, he shouted. Just Jesus immediately reached out and grabbed him. You have so little faith, Jesus said. Why did you doubt me? I think something we got to jump into that's amazingly critical to recognize is that this is not just Jesus calling Peter out onto the water. This is a student having an encounter with his teacher uh, or in Jewish terms, his rabbi. Right. And yeah. so 
if you don't have a lot of understanding of how that relationship worked or what it looked like, it's pretty important because you'll miss a lot what's going on in this story. So rabbis in that time and culture, there, there would have been the, the, the Torah, right? The first five books of the Old Testament, the Torah. Uh, and, and the law uh, is so critical uh, for Hebrew culture. And so you would have these rabbis that would be making up level from level from level uh, as students till that one point they'd become a rabbi. Every rabbi would have a little bit different understanding of how they would interpret the law, uh, what it would mean to them. And they would have, it, just like any place today, you could have, go to five different churches, five different pastors speak on the same scripture, and you're going to get five different messages, right? right. It's just human nature, it's how it rolls. And, um, but what's really cool, as they develop their system of understanding, their interpretation became known as their yoke. And um, so every rabbi had their own yoke, their own way of teaching. And so Jesus had his yoke, which is interesting because the Bible references for his yoke is easy and his burden is light, right? Yep. Uh, so I don't know this necessarily commenting on his teachings as a rabbi, but um, their yoke was what they would teach their students. And so the rabbis would have the best of the best, the summa cum laude, the, the valedictorians, the best of the best students. They would have made it that far, come to them at some point and say, rabbi, I want you to teach me uh, what you know. And the rabbi would just grill them and see if they knew their stuff, if they had the chops. And if not, he would say, no, maybe you need to go into the family business. Uh, but if yes, he would take them in and he would teach them what he knew. What's critical about that is there's this moment where the rabbi would have this realization. And if he said, yeah, I want you to be my student, what he's saying to them is, I believe that you can do what I can do. Mm. So I'm taking you on to be my student, right? Mm. And um, you've got this moment where you realize if you look back into Matthew chapter four, um, Jesus, his students didn't come to him first. He went to them. Right. right. And so you find most of these guys doing whatever the family trade would have been, uh, just including, you know, as well, you've got Simon Peter and, um, you know, he's a fisherman, right? He's called Simon, would later be called Peter. Mm -hmm. And Jesus comes and calls him saying, hey, follow me. Uh, I'm going to teach you. And it's like, I'm going to teach you my yoke. And, and at that moment, understanding the culture, Jesus is saying, hey, I believe that you can do what I can do. Mm -hmm. And so that night, after they just had a day of feeding 5,000 people, clearly, I'm sure, exhausted, fried, right? I mean, I've had days where I'm just trying to feed my family and I go to bed tired. Right. These guys, <laughs> 5,000 people get fed. And now they're on a boat. It's a storm. And Jesus waits till three in the morning. I love the timing of Jesus and, and, and all things in life, unless it's uh, my life. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's always never soon enough for me. Right. And but uh, you've got three in the morning. Jesus comes out. Why three in the morning and clueless as to why three in the morning. Uh, but it's late and there's frustration, there's exhaustion and the storm is still raging uh, and, and they're delirious enough to think, man, this is a ghost, right? Yep. And so they use his voice. Don't, don't worry. Don't be concerned. I love the humanity of scripture. Uh, these, these are just regular men. These are not superheroes. Yep. Uh, these are guys that, that, you know, had their issues. And, and when they realize it's them, the encounter that, that Peter has is this moment, maybe a revelation of this isn't just Jesus. This is my rabbi. And I can do what he can do. Jesus, if that's you, call me out to you. And Jesus says, well, come on. And so he takes the, the, the step. And um, when we're talking identity, if, if, if you don't know who you belong to, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, man, it's really hard to gain bearing on what you're capable of. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people's identity uh, and how they see themselves limits them greatly in what they accomplish in life because they think that they're only capable of and what they see through their mind's eye of how they see themselves, right? But when you start recognizing yourself through the, through the lens of Jesus and that we are his disciples, um, well, well, then the game has changed because, you know, Jesus even says greater things will you do than what I've done. Right. That shakes me up. You know, that, that gets to me. Um, it's literally him saying, we'll get out of the boat and start taking just one step, you know, just one step. And um, 
I find there's a, a challenge for me in my day-to-day -day identity with the times when I operate knowing that not only am I a son of God, uh, but I'm also a disciple of Christ. And he's called me out to say, yeah, come on out of the boat. Um, there was this movie. Uh, uh, it was, it was kind of cool for its time, but it maybe it came out in the mid early nineties and somebody had invested the money for the book of Matthew to be like shot on video, almost like it was a movie word for word through the Bible. I don't remember what version they used, but all the parts are acted out. And when Jesus speaks and it's the red letters, Jesus actually speaks and stuff. And it was kind of cool. And I think it was just called Matthew or something, but it was amazing. This one moment uh, where the walking on water scene, because in my mind's eye, when Peter sinks and Jesus picks him up uh, and he says, you know, you have so little faith. Why did you doubt? In my mind, it was always a moment of Jesus looking at Peter and saying, man, you had this, you know, why did you doubt? Mm -hmm. But in that movie, I think it, brought amazing insight because it shows him bringing Peter out of the water and his comment was not to Peter, but it was to all the other disciples in the boat. Right. You know, why did you doubt? Why, you know, so little faith, only this, only Peter got to enjoy this moment and not only walking on the water, but the intimacy of knowing that I'll catch him no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think there's a lot of us that tonight when we're talking about identity, it's tonight where Jesus is saying, yeah, I, I want you to step out. Um, into things that are risky for you. Praying for people, man, it's scary to pray for people, especially for like healing or something, because we always think, what if it doesn't happen? What if I sink, you know? Um, and even if you've done it a bunch of times with uh, great success, it's always a challenge. It's always nerve wracking. Um, you know, I, I've met people in life that they've had a lot of successes, whatever it's been, uh, maybe in business or uh, family or, or whatever it would be like that. And there's always these moments where there's always something, if they push themselves, things that make them nervous. Right. Yes. And, yes. uh, and I think that's how it is in our relationship with Jesus, that if you're living comfortable for too long, chances are you might not be right in the middle of his will. Right. Cause you know, he wasn't a car salesman. He's like, man, you're going to follow me. You're not going to have a place to lay your bed at night. You know, lay, lay your head at night. Um, you know, you want to follow me. You're going to need to carry your cross. It wasn't like, hey, follow me, and we're going uh, to um, the hotel, and we're going to have five-star dinner and sleep on comfy beds with with uh, fluffy pillows. On. You know what I mean? Like, he's not selling anybody that line. He's like, hey, you know, um, James and John, when their mama says, hey, can they can can these boys sit at your right and your left? And Jesus is like, well, they can't do that, but they'll get to sip from the cup that I that, that I'm going to drink from. He's like, they're not going to sit my right and my left, but they're going to know what it is to die. You know, it's like, wow. And, and but there's there, there's something uh, of relief when I get into this passage about my identity, because I mean, Kendra, I, I know we've had honest conversations. There's both been time uh, for both of us. There's been times where life, whatever the strong wind or big wave, there's been things that have us take our eye off of him. Uh, man, I know for myself so many times, like just I know what it is to sink. Mm -hmm. I know what it is yeah. to feel like um, not only am I sinking, but I am sinking in front of um, the one who's given me the ability to walk on top of the water. Yes. And yeah. that's challenging. That's where shame really tries to, I, I think one of the key things I want to look at tonight is shame. I think shame is one of the, the big players that holds us back from our identity. Um, because we really think once we failed and once we've uh, sunk in a bit, thinking, man, who am I to get back up and do this again? Um, and so we tend to back off. We take our foot off the pedal. We don't pray for anybody anymore, or we don't step out or, or, or risk uh, being dynamic. You know, uh, Jesus is never static in his ministry. He's always dynamic in his ministry. Yes. And, uh, yes. and, and, and when we find our lives being in more of a static state than a dynamic state, there's a disconnect there. And so I would say tonight, you know, what I'd love to talk about a little bit is just the dynamic of um, where do you see yourself? Like, uh, you know, are there moments where you've recognized um, I've sunk in this season and I feel the grip of shame and uh, but I need to get out of that. I need to have the moment where he embraces me and maybe he speaks to everybody else. Maybe it's not even me where he says, 
Why did you have little faith while he's pulling me up? You know, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it, does that resonate with you at all? Yeah, actually, yeah, I, actually, I, I this scripture, this scripture. Um, am I, um, am I, does that sound weird to you, Joe? Does that sound weird to you, Joe? No. Okay. I'm just okay. going to, I'm just going to. Let me check something really quick. I'm so sorry. That's okay. I have it all. I, I'm just hearing feedback and I don't want to. Anyway. Can you hear that? I'm hearing, I'm hearing feedback. Do you hear something, Joy? <laughs> okay, that worked. Okay. Oh my gosh, we are hearing the funniest sounds on this end. I don't know if anybody else is. So I'm so sorry, because yes, that's powerful. And I was going to say, we might have just mute on and off, bud. Um, what I was going to say, I love that scripture and that whole parable. And I actually had done a teaching on it myself and really studied it because there's so much that's in there. And speaking to your identity and it's crazy because I in fact I'm looking at it on the scripture um, I love um, it says oh gosh in 29 when he says come he said then Peter got down out of the boat walked on the water and came toward Jesus this is what I love on verse 30 because this is just what you were saying but when he saw the wind and so what happened was a storm came in that that Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus for a moment goes to the storm and then immediately fear comes in, right? And he begins to sink and he cries out and he says, Lord, save me. And so he's bringing his eyes back to the Lord. And how many times do we do that in our circumstances? We come back and say, God, I need you, save me. But here's the cool part of that. And it immediately, Jesus reaches out his hand and caught him. And what I love about that is it's just an example is that God's never far from us. He And, and in fact, in this, it, to me, he's like, he's right there so much that he can just reach out and grab him. And it speaks to the intimacy in Jesus. And as we draw closer to him and we have this relationship and this intimacy with him, that he is right there to capture us. But I love, it's the example of what took, what distracted Peter was the storm. And it was the winds that came and it took his eyes off of him because there was a distraction that came. And isn't that exactly what the enemy does is he comes to distract us that our identities would be shaken and then we forget whose we are and where we belong and then we put our eyes back on him and everything comes back into alignment and he pulls us up from our bootstraps right yeah, i think that um peter needed this moment in his life he needed this for everything else that was going to come down the line he um as cool as it would have been to maybe walk all the way out and do the 50 yard dash or whatever you know or being, you know, I remember being a kid, you know, uh, in, in, you know, elementary school and having to do a thing called a shuttle run where you go out and come back. It'd been cool to do a shuttle run, right? And make it all the way, walk out there. And then you'd have that story to tell everybody for the rest of your life that I walked in the water. And, um, but I think this is what he needed. Um, I think for some of us, man, I don't think it's uh, God's plan for us uh, ever to fail. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he wants to prosper us, not harm us. Um, but I think that sometimes the failures of our life are so critical to set us up for the successes in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. And um, if you get so afraid of failure, uh, it, it, it's impossible to walk in your identity. Yes. When you're so afraid that, that sinking is going to happen, I'm going to sink again. I've talked to people that have been paralyzed to make a life choice. Yes. Um, where to move uh, a new cell phone plan. You know what I mean? Like, uh, where to eat, you know, there, there's people that, that just, they don't want to make decisions anymore because they've gotten to the point where they say, I made enough wrong ones. I don't want to make another one. Um, and so, but when you've done that, you've removed yourself um, and you, you've, you've removed the identity even of Jesus as redeemer. Mm -hmm. right? You're not only affecting your identity, but the identity of Jesus. Cause man, you know, I love talking to, to high school students that are praying about college or or um, going into the workforce or, or doing whatever I love talking to high school students that are freaking out because I said listen what, what if you realize that no matter if you hit the mark or you miss it by a mile you can't change the fact that he's always a redeemer right what, what does that do for you uh, in your ability to dream now mm -hmm. he's always going to redeem 
and, and, and you're not pulling a Jonah. You're not running the other way intentionally. You're trying to do your best. You know, man, um, I, listen, there's going to be a day when your uh, uh, grand girl is, she's ready to, to get up and start walking and your hands are going to be right there. And as grandma, you're like, man, I want you to succeed. I want you to walk. And it doesn't matter how many times she falls, man, she's going to get picked back up. And man, it's the heart of the father for us. And so I believe tonight, Man, somebody's going to be watching it. I want to encourage you, whoever it is is watching, and you're paralyzed to make life choices. You're paralyzed to make a decision. And, and it could be even in the simplest of things. Own this moment before you go to bed tonight. Close your eyes. See Peter sinking in the hands of Jesus reaching out to him to lift him up. Yeah. Just, just imagine yourself. Get yourself there. Get in that picture and put yourself there. Put yourself in that moment where you're now Peter and you've sunk in, and the, 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 just imagine the embrace of that, the, 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 the hand reaching down, that firm grip that's pulling you up. Um, you know, when uh, I can't ever read this story and not have this imagery of when I was uh, really young, uh, uh, like five years old, and we'd gone to uh, the beach uh, one year for vacation, and I'm floating in the pool. We had some pool time, and we had those one, one of those inflatables that Dad always spends 30 minutes blowing up, and he's got a headache. <laughs> and, and I remember just lounging and floating in the pool, and I really didn't know how to swim yet. I had, had like the water wings, you know, um, and that's what I would use, but I was on the float, and I wasn't worried about that. And my brother had this uh, a dumb little inner tube. You remember these little inner tubes? Maybe you're going to have the horse head coming out, you know? Yeah. But man, that kid was quick. My brother's two years older than me, uh, and he was quick in that thing. And all of a sudden, I remember just relaxing, getting my little, little baby suntan. And out of nowhere, my brother just flips me over uh, into the water. And I still to this day, I can remember bubbles going up. I remember going down and bubbles going up. And I can so clearly remember all of a sudden this hand that seemed enormous just boom into the water, snatched me up and pulled me out. And it was dad, right? Wow. I can never read this moment without thinking about that moment mm. and the moments where I feel like, man, I don't know if I want to try again in life. I feel like God brings that back up to me. Like, man, you know, even if you see the bubbles going up, there's going to be a hand that's coming down. Mm. And so man, I feel like there's going to be somebody watching this, whether tonight or some other time. And, and all you see in this season of life is just the bubbles going up. But I, I want to tell you, there's, you're about to experience a moment in the name of Jesus where you, you experience seeing the hand coming down. Mm -hmm. And uh, there, there's a safety in that. There's a, man, there's, you can breathe and there's life in that. And um, it's good to live in your identity as a son or daughter of the king. It's good to live in a, in, in a place where you know, in my greatest failures, that hand's still going to reach me, you know? Um Paul says, you know, it's not like we're trying to sin. We're not going to keep on contending to be sinners because his grace is more than enough. But there's freedom uh, to live recklessly abandoned for him, knowing that, man, even in my biggest failures, that hand will get me. Mm -hmm. They'll pick me up, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just encouragement. And, and you know what, man, Kendra, I, I'm not good at living that every day. <clears throat> I'm not going to lie to anybody watching saying I'm good at that. Uh, I'm not. But it's, it's something I'm pressing on towards mm -hmm. and walk through together this journey with people that are watching. And, um, and if you're watching and <clears throat> you would have a prayer request or anything, man, feel free to post these things here. But there's other resources where you can go, uh, a place called the Warriors Wall. You can go and get on that and post prayer requests. There's people that want to pray for me, fight for this. One of the things, you, you know, Kendra, I know you would like to remind people of, you don't have to be a Lone Ranger Christian in this, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so important is that we need um, we need community and we need to be able to come alongside of each other because, Joy, you know, there's so many days that I've called you and I'm like, am I on, you know, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, I'm not quite sure. And, you know, it's just so good to come alongside because that might be a day that you're strong or even, you know, we have our spouses and one's strong on one day and one's a little bit, you know, not so strong on the other day, but in this community where we come together and we build each other up and we encourage each other and we pray for each other and we remind each other who we are. And you were saying our identity is who are we? We're, we're sons and daughters of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and his plans for us are for good. And even like you're talking about that fear of not 
wanting to take a risk or wanting to take that next forward decision. I mean, being almost paralyzed to the point of not making a decision, that's real common. And so if you're hearing this tonight and you feel like, yeah, that's me, you need to know that you're not alone. Um, but there is somebody that's coming against you, that uh, the enemy's coming against you to try and put you into that place. And so we want to come alongside of you and help you press through that. Because when you press through that on the other side, there's just this freedom that comes. And God's promise to us, I love the promises of God. He says he will take all things and turn them to good for those whose eyes are upon him. And so that means, you know, I was just talking to somebody this last weekend and I just, they were talking about their, you know, they, they're just so afraid of making the wrong decision. And I said, when you take a risk, it's not a wrong decision. You might get a, the opportunity to do it in a few different ways, but that's awesome. I mean, that's creativeness, that's strategy. That's like, um, test, you know, you, do, you get to do things differently. It might not work perfect like you expected, but that doesn't mean it was fruitful and it made an impact. And so, um, so I, I agree with you. I, I'm just gonna validate what Joey said. If you're on this call and you're stuck, um, we just speak, uh, I just speak freedom over you in the name of Jesus and that I encourage you just that one thing that you're stuck in, that one thing that you're afraid to make a decision, just make a decision and commit um, and just do it. And what's going to happen is God is going to reach down. He's going to help you and he's going to help you walk through that. And a girlfriend was saying, she's like, well, what if I, you know, the Lord says, well, you know, she said, I, if, what if I go to do a project and um, there's green and blue and I say, Lord, which one am I supposed to pick? And I think he says green, but then I'm not sure it was him. So was that me or him? I said, pick green. If, if green isn't the color, God will bring it back and he'll help you choose blue, but he'll give you an opportunity to redo it. But it's never a wrong choice. It's just a matter of forward movement. Like you just have to take the step to take a forward movement and he's going to meet you in every single step. Yeah. Yeah people often forget that the Lord's looking for um, co-laborers in yeah. this process. You know, the, the, he's given us a mind to use. And, um, and so a lot of times, man, I think when you get to the point where your every decision is, and I'm not saying don't, don't pray through things, but if every decision is so dictated, it'll be stressful when you think, man, is this, is this the right call or is this the wrong call? Or is this the right, you know, like, um, and if you're doing that, that's a, that's a pretty good indicator of this is an area of identity that I need to invite the Lord in and search my heart and see where that, that problem is coming from. Yes. And, and that's one of the things I would encourage people tonight. If any of these things are uh, putting up a flag for you, like, man, I see that in myself. Uh, if you are always questioning or second guessing yourself, um, if you are too nervous um, to ever be even in agreement with somebody else's decision because you're like, man, I don't want to be a part of something if that goes wrong. Yeah. Any of these things, you know, happen. It's a, it's an area where you, you you can do this, and and this is key. Say, Jesus, I invite you right now to remind me and show me um, where did that begin, and what do you want to speak to me in that place where that where that moment happened. You know, mm -hmm. um, it could have been as a kid where you were scolded for thinking outside the 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 the, the box. Um, you know, but allow Jesus to to to, to bring you back to those points where sometimes the enemy just takes lies and he'll insert them whenever wounds happen. And it can happen when you're a child, a teenager, uh, an adult. And, um, you know, he's not picky, but he'll take whatever opportunity he can. And so it's critical for us to ask if we're recognizing these things to say, okay, uh, Father God, would you reveal to me when did this happen? Help me recognize the moments that need healing in my life so identity can be restored and that I can walk uh, in, in fuller intimacy with you, right? Yes. <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> absolutely. Well, hey, you guys, if you're listening live and you have any quick questions as we're kind of finalizing up on the hour, this was um, one of our first times we did this live. And so I think I've had a couple goofy laughs in here and um, because we're just learning, but hey, we did it, right? Hey, see, there's a there's a great example we took a huge risk we really we were laughing before we even started this I'm like Joey I don't know how to go live and I don't know if we're supposed to be here or there and we got on and I don't know if you guys heard it but there was crazy laughs and sounds and so but we took a risk and here we are so is there anything real quick before we head out that you guys have that you want some feedback on or that we can pray for you or um, anything that you have real quick and I'm just we're looking at a phone because I'm not even sure how, how to do this quite yet on this um, webinar 
Okay, cool. So nothing, nothing pending right now. So as Joey said, you guys, we're going to pray this out, but um, we want to invite you to join us on the warrior wall, which you can find on candle for him. And um, also we've got the King's table, which you can join us every week. We are going to figure out how to master this process to come to you, hang out with you. You can sign up, share with your friends, sharing is caring. That's what I heard. Um, our heart and our passion behind this whole entire ministry. Joey, you said it earlier that, um, that, um, Jesus was the teacher and, and the disciples were his students and that he has um, left us to do things that he's done even greater. So we just want to be a teacher of his word. And as we're students of his word alongside of all of you guys. And so we just want to come alongside of you and, and live this journey of life, but do it well with the understanding of who we are and whose we are. Um, so uh, we'll put in the links below. I'll get you the, the links to, um, so the Kendra for him website, which will hook you up on all these different things. The other thing that we offer you guys is um, strategy sessions, 45 minute strategy sessions where you can um, register for those and either speak with Joey or myself. And um, we just come alongside of you and help you. Maybe if you feel like you're stuck or you need something to help you just get to the next level, we come alongside of you and help you in that. So that's another way just to connect. We, we just, we have this passion and heart to equip and release people. And we just want you walking in your fullness and wholeness of Christ. Amen. Um, Absolutely. All right. I'll tell you what, a great thing to do. We're getting into Easter season. And if you want to take a risk, if you're looking for a, a good way to take a risk, invite somebody to church somewhere. Yes. What a great way, to, a simple way to take a risk, man. Find somebody you think is going to say no. Not, maybe not even somebody that you know is going to say yes. And my mom will go wherever I ask. So I'm not going to ask her. That's not the risk. Oh, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask somebody that, that, that's going to be a risk and step out there. So begin to search ways to do that. But man, what a great night and a great first step. Facebook Live, my, my first time to ever go live on Facebook. And whew, now I can say I've done that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you sweating a little? A little bit. <laughs> hey, Joey, do you want to pray us out as we finish up our time together? Yeah. So God, thank you so much, Lord, that your word is living. Second Timothy 3.16 says, every word is God breathed. Every word of scripture is Lord. Even the words we got into tonight are living and, and they bring life. And so I thank you. I speak life over the people that are watching. Lord, that they be encouraged. Uh, Lord, those that feel like they just see the bubbles going up. God, that they would walk into a moment tonight. That they experience even a moment as they get in bed tonight where they just see the hand coming down. Uh, Lord, that you're just a, you're a rescuer by nature. That's who you are. You're a redeemer. And Lord, I thank you as we operate and we recognize in that uh, that truth, Lord, that it would change the way we walk and live and uh, that we would walk strong and firmly in our identities grounded and founded in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, bless you, brother. Bless you. Great to do this. Let's do it again. I know. I love these nights. They're so much fun. Come join us next week. Love you guys. Goodbye. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.